Good morning to my audience. My name is Alessandro Pignedoli, and I'm a PhD student in TWIST group at University of Duisburg Essen, lead from Professor Karin Evesorosito. In this presentation, I would like to show and uh, explain my research. But before doing that, I will also like to acknowledge uh, Bjorn Dorschel, which is a master's student in our group. The title of the presentation is Exploiting Brown Emotion and the Correlations for Computing. So during this talk, I would like that you have in mind uh, that we're talking about brown emotion, then computing, and at the end correlation. So I will try to put all these words together here. So that's why at first, the first slide, I would like to introduce what is brown emotion. Brown emotion is the random motion of particles suspended in a medium. And this phenomenon was uh, at first explained by Albert Einstein in 1905. And the K idea or the K view is that these small particles in the media uh, receive at any window of time uh, a random number of impacts uh, of a random strength um, from in a random direction. In such a way, the, uh, at the end of the day, we uh, can observe this effective motion for which at any instant particles have a random distribution in the space with a random velocity. In this second slide, I would like to summarize what are the keys idea about uh, behind Brownian computation. And um, for Brownian computers, uh, we uh, mean uh, a physical system that is supposed to do um, a mathematical operation exploiting its physical properties. To have uh, in, the, in this slide, I would like to give you also an intuitive idea about that. So I invite the audience to consider the sketch in the slide. So here we want to consider the simple case of a small object like a particle that is placed uh, in the leftmost portion of a long channel. And on the, on the other side of this channel, there is a low energy trap, uh, which is represented from the blue square. So this particle due to thermal fluctuation and also interaction diffuse through the system until at some point get trapped in uh, this uh, in this energy, energy trap. And uh, the escape rate of these particles is low if the trap is, uh, the energy trap is deep enough. So the key idea is that accomplish the computation means that the system can trap in the configuration, which means that we found the solution. The reason why we're interested in this kind of system is that uh, usually uh, they are they're supposed to be energy efficient and in some situation they can be also very, very fast. So unfortunately, I don't have time to go in the details of this kind of motivation here. In this other slide, I would like to point that um, since we are trying to exploit the properties of an actual physical system, we want that uh, the motion in the, in the configuration space, which is driven from um, um, interaction, driving forces and uh, thermal fluctuation that at some point converts to the solution, which means that the trajectories in the configuration space which are presented in the, in the figure, some point get trapped in the configuration space, they should be uh, somehow isomorphic to a desired confrontation. In such a way we can measure the solution and say we found the solution of our problem. In these slides, I would like to introduce what we study for uh, implement this idea of brown computing. So here we want to consider a system which we have n classical interacting particles that are free to move in a temperature gradient. And as you can imagine, the distribution of the particles uh, over the time depends on the physical properties of the system. For instance, uh, the temperature gradient, the, the, the shape of the temperature profile, uh, the driving forces, and uh, those the interaction between particles. So at the end of the day, we want to study this kind of system and understand how we can implement uh, this idea of brand computing, exploiting the system. And to do that, since in my group, we work on skirmions, which are uh, magnetic topological weirs uh, with many interesting properties. And for example, they have this particle-like character, which is uh, 
important for uh, the, this kind of application because we are talking about system of particles. They also uh, have a topology of protection, so these particles are stable, and also they can be created and destroyed and uh, manipulated. So uh, they are very flexible for, for, for application. And I don't have time to go into details on the skirmels here, but um, for simplicity, you can imagine a magnetic structure, which uh, is like the picture here in this slide. In this slide, I want to motivate why skirmels can be interesting for this kind of application. Uh, indeed, there are uh, evidence that skirmels perform a brown emotion uh in a uh, in some system and also they can have a, a attractive a short range attractive interaction which will be it's useful for for the brownian computation idea so to go more in the detail of what we do is basically we at first consider a system of n particles like i said and we study the time evolution of them time evolution obey to newton equation plus a stochastic term, which is uh, written here in red, which, uh, which describes the thermal fluctuation in the system. And study the system or differential equation uh, allows us to uh, study the property, the property of the system of n interacting particles. And at the end of the day, what we want to do is to study the configuration of these n particles varying the external parameter and map the density, so the distribution of particles to the solution of the problem that we want to solve. So in this slide, I want to summarize what are the main questions that, uh, of this project. So the first question is how particles can solve a problem. So how we can actually um, create the condition for having a Brownian computation. Uh, secondly, we want also to understand how we can quantify and measure the solution once we find the solution. And third, we, we are also interested in find or quantify how long does it take for the system to find a solution. So we also interested in the criteria of efficiency of uh, this computation. And to do that, basically, we study trajectories of uh, this assemble of interacting particles that diffuse in uh, a temperature gradient. And the idea is that the, the st a statistical study over time averages can reveal um, uh, this, uh, the, the solution of the problem and uh, the behavior of the system, and in particular, the population splitting, which means that uh, some particles at some point uh, uh, get trapped in the configuration space. And so uh, we want to measure their density to map the density to the probability density to solve the problem. And in particular, Talking about the population splitting means that our system, since at some point uh, we want that to get trapped in uh, this configuration space, means that we break the ergodicity of the system. And by definition, ergodicity means that the averages, uh, the time averages and the ensemble averages are not equivalent anymore. So to quantify that, we're interested in studying uh, a non um, um, um evolution for which uh, the averages over different uh, uh, window of time uh, get different, which means that for quantifying that, we study this quantity, which is called aging, which is actually what I said. So we consider uh, some statistical quantity, for example, the mean square displacement of, of particles, and we do calculation on uh, average time averages varying the time window. And uh, this allow us to uh, quantify how much we are breaking the ergodicity in the system. And the idea is that the breaking ergodicity means that the system found the solution. This is the, the, the key idea. So the, 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 this approach in principle allow us to uh, answer to uh, the first question. And uh, for the second one, so we want to uh, actually measure our solution and uh, the approach that we are following is the following. So um, we consider the Voronoi diagram of the distribution of particles over time, which is uh, a, a diagram that can be constructed defining some region in the space, which, uh, uh, and each region is also, is, um, is defined by the set of points that are closest to a given point, so more particles and not another. 
In such a way, we have uh, uh, due this uh, definition, a local measure of the density. And in this example here, we have uh, two, two, two different examples. So in on the left, we have a configuration in which uh, particles are equidistant. So it means that um, the, the density is, uh, is homogeneous. And but of course, by the definition, we have some boundary effects. But here you can see in the middle that the area of each cell of each cell is more or less the same, which means that the inverse of the area measures the density of the particle, which is uh, as you can see from the color scale is more or less the same. On the other hand, here we have a, a situation in which we are clearly an area in which the density of particles is higher, and uh, Building this Voronoi diagram, we can quantify that uh, here the maximum of the density is close to these points here, according so to what we expect uh, looking uh, uh, visually at the, com at the configuration. So uh, this project is still, uh, we are still working on this project and the main outlook are to investigate uh, the degrees of freedom of this kind of system, uh, uh, probably identifying in phases, and also adding some analytical description of the time evolution of the density uh, of the density of particles. And at the end, we want we would like also to link the system of stochastic differential equation that I presented to the actual scheme motion. In such a way, we have. Uh, a mapping from the toy model and to the actual physical parameters in a magnetic system. And after that, I would like to thank you all for your attention.